Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, we're doing like a non-Sunday video, which I don't normally do because I'm Sunday Jess, but <laughs> considering the craziness that has happened in the last um, like three days <laughs> around the world with the coronavirus, I went on my Instagram, and if you guys don't follow me on there, you definitely should be because not only do I ask you guys what kind of videos you want to see, but I'm like giving you updates and always giving you like tips and advice over my Instagram as well. So I asked you guys on my Instagram if I should do a video specifically for all the missionaries who just got like reassigned to like a digital MTC and will not actually be going to an MTC. And you guys said that I should do the video sooner rather than later. So instead of waiting like another two days, I figured let's go ahead and get this video up now because from the posts that I've seen on Facebook, <laughs> you guys are hurting my heart and my heart hurts for you because I can only imagine like how actually like kind of devastating this whole thing would be to kind of have like your whole like mission like literally like flipped upside down in just like two days. So yeah, the church came out with a statement saying that, hey, uh, the Provo MTC and I think now the Mexico MTC and the England MTC will like no longer receive new missionaries and the missionaries who should be going right now um, until further notice will be doing like online learning. And you still have to basically follow like mission rules and everything. For those of you guys who aren't like 100% like up to date on this, I will read you a post that I actually read from a girl who is going through this right now. Um, and she basically like explained how it's all working. So this is on the Facebook page, Many Are Called But Fewer Sisters. I always have a link down below my videos because if you guys are going on a mission, thinking about going on a mission, or like are an RM, it's a great Facebook page with like literally like almost 30,000 girls. Been there, done that, want to give you advice, and it's just a great like, just great place to, you know, share feelings. And that's what everyone's doing right now during this whole coronavirus thing. So this one girl um, posted saying, I'm one of the missionaries who was supposed to report this Wednesday. I was called to the Italy Milan mission. I just got an email from church. I will still be set apart and be required to follow missionary standards and conduct, including dress. They will be mailing me all my books and my name tag. I'll have six hours of online video class a day. We'll have personal study. I'll be assigned a companion remotely, and we will hold companionship study each day over video chat. I will be given missionary things to do on evenings and weekends, so I won't just be sitting around. <laughs> I still don't know what mission I'll be temporarily reassigned to because obviously Italy is like insane right now so they're not going to just go to send her to Italy in six weeks. Like everyone's having to deal with things being cancelled and things being like switched around. Whether you're in high school and your prom is getting cancelled or you're in college like me and you're stressing out about your college graduation being cancelled. <laughs> Everybody's having to deal with like the cancellation of something, concerts, parties, whatever. However, I know a mission is way different because it is a very like once in a lifetime opportunity that's really special. Special. It's almost kind of like a rite of passage, and I totally get that in in a sort of relatable sense, um, but not completely the same. When I got my mission call, I was called to the Peru MTC, and I was like pretty let down. Like I was really excited to go serve my mission in Peru, but I wasn't excited to go to the Peru MTC at all because everybody that I'd known had always gone to the Provo MTC. It's like the place. Like your dad went there, your grandpa went there, your brothers and sisters went there. Like. And the fact that like I didn't get to go to that place and experience all of the things that they had told me about, I was like pretty bummed. And like I said, I know this isn't like exactly the same, like I still gotta go to an MTC, whatever. It was a very different experience from the Provo MTC, I will have to say that. And like, I, I, you know, at the beginning I felt like a little bit like gypped out on the experience um, of like the traditional Provo MTC rite of passage. But I learned so many more things and like ended up like, it ended up being a great situation. So. As hard as it is to like look at the positive during this time, that's what like you guys have to do because there's no other option. So it's like, <laughs> I hate saying that, but like, I mean, the only thing you can do to make it better is just be happy and literally just like kind of accept what the Lord has given you during this time and know that like it'll all be okay and it's all going to work out and you'll see the reasoning behind it whether that be in six months or, or like two years, whatever. You girls that are gonna go through this whole online MTC thing will be like paving a way and kind of like pioneering a new way that the church will handle the MTC, which is really cool if you think about it. Like you are part of like the new, like maybe like a new generation of missionaries. And like how cool to be able to tell your kids that like, yeah, like, when I went to the MTC, there was a freaking worldwide pandemic virus and we had to do the MTC online. Like, that's gonna be crazy. And like, you are going to be able to give so much feedback and be such an integral part during this whole transition process for the church. And so your, like, your experience is totally 
valid and necessary and Heavenly Father prepared you for this. They always say that like <clears throat> Heavenly Father would never give you a trial that you can't handle and that's really true. For a lot of you girls this must be like totally trying and I get that and like you have every right to be kind of bummed and feel a little bit gypped out on the experience but that's not going to help you feel better in the long run. Um, so making the most out of it, which I do have to say, like I said, that Facebook group that I plugged earlier that'll be linked down below is a great place because tons of girls who are going through this exact same thing right now are commenting and posting on there. And there's some really great things happening. One thing I did want to share was one girl actually said, sisters, for all of you who are going to now be doing the virtual MTC, I thought it would be fun to start a group chat or group email that we can all support and get to know each other as if we were in the MTC. We're all going to need lots of love and support. And if we do this together with faith in God, we are going to be Satan's worst nightmare and a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Comment if you'd like to join. And like in less than 24 hours, this already has like over 50 comments. So I know that like there will be ways for you to still connect with missionaries. Things like this happen all the time with missionaries. I think back to like 2012 when the age change happened with missionaries. I knew missionaries that were already in the field, just barely gotten there, but were like 19 year old boys or 21 year old girls. And those girls felt so gypped that they could have gone to their mission literally two years earlier. But like their life just didn't work out like that. Like, so all missionaries have kind of been there. We, you know, things aren't necessarily always traditional. They're not always what you expect. And you just have to roll with it. And that's part of being a missionary. But here's the thing. It's not the most important part of being a missionary, nor does it alter your purpose as a missionary. Not to get all cheesy here, but you do have to remember the real reason that you are being a missionary, which is to serve the Lord and also to help your brothers and sisters all over the world, however that may be. And so no matter what way that you are preparing for your mission, whether it be in the real MTC or online, you are all preparing for the same purpose. You are still united with all the missionaries all over the world, all 60,000 something of them, and you're all united in the same exact purpose. And so um, one thing I do wanna share with you guys right now that I think might be really helpful is like the most empowering missionary talk that I've ever read. It's hands down my favorite talk ever. And like, I just cry thinking about it because it's amazing. It's by Elder Holland. I think it's called The Purpose of a Missionary. And I will have that link down below. It's also on my blog in a PDF form. Um, so you guys can print it, you can just read it online, you can do whatever, you can send it to somebody you know that's going through all this. Um, it's an amazing talk that just like reminds missionaries their true purpose and like really just like gets a fire going underneath of you. So <laughs> it's a great talk, I definitely recommend it. And then to finish off this video, I want to show you guys a great post that I think is from actually like a licensed therapist. Yes, it is. That I thought was really helpful and great. Also on this Facebook page, so there's just tons of great stuff on here, guys. She wrote, I just want to say that it's okay if you are feeling disappointment for not being able to have the typical MTC experience. I work as a therapist and have found the more we push down emotions and deny them, the more they can grow and maybe even warp into resentment or distrust. It's better to walk through the loss, cry if needed, and then you can be in a more solid place to look for positives. If you skip it, it might wedge as something else. Recognize what you feel, maybe journal so you can look back, pray for acceptance, and when you think you are ready, look for blessings if possible. And thank you for being willing to serve. It takes great courage and faith, especially at this time in our history with so many changes. Like I said, like, you guys are literally at, like, the peak of, like, what could be a whole new way of teaching missionaries at the MTC, and that's really cool. And Heavenly Father entrusted you to be able to, like, be this pioneer in a way. And so, like she said, you know, acknowledge the loss, and it's okay to feel pain and to feel upset about it, but also realize, like, the potential and, like, the faith that Heavenly Father has in you to be able to handle the situation and make the most out of it. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say on the topic. Uh, short video. I'll probably still post something on Sunday. I actually have a vlog that I've been dying to share that's my first week in the mission field. I've been reposting a lot of my original vlogs that I actually made as a missionary and I'm really excited about it because I feel like you guys know me now. You you know me as a person now, but I want you guys to get to see like Mission Jessie and how terrified she was of being a missionary <laughs> and how scary things were and just know that like I wasn't always, you know, this cool and collected. <laughs> I too had my breakdowns all the time as a missionary. So I don't know if missionaries that are already in their virtual MTC can watch my videos. I'll have to figure that one out. But yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts on the whole situation with coronavirus. Let me know your feelings and, you know, maybe tips or advice you have for the sisters that are getting ready to go to their virtual MTCs. I love you guys and stay safe and you're gonna do amazing things no matter what MTC you go to. You're gonna help people no matter what you do, online or offline or wherever. So just have an open heart.
I love you guys and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!